the most requested video we ever had, push notifications with Flutter. Hi, I'm Alex the Architect from MacFrap, and in this series of videos I'll show you how to send push notifications for the Flutter framework. And there are a few things we are going to need in order to start. So in this first video, we are going to need all the modules and services and accounts we are going to need. And the first one is an account in Firebase. Google makes it so you can only send push notifications to Android devices if you have a Firebase account, so we are going to need that. And since we are going to use Firebase to send those pushes, we can also use it to send push to iOS devices. So, in this case, you should go to your uh, Apple developer account, create and download the certificates that are needed to send push notifications for iOS. I'll leave a link in the description of this video so you can follow the documentation to create those certificates. Also, we are going to need a few specific modules installed in your Flutter app. So, as you can see here in my screen, I have this brand new uh, Flutter uh, project. I'm going to upload this project in the Backfrap GitHub so you can download it. And we are going to use the Parse SDK for Flutter in its latest version, the Firebase Core uh, module, the Firebase Messaging module, and the Flutter local notification, so we can render the notifications in the uh, app. Also, we are going to publish some cloud code that you have to implement in order to send those messages. So you are going to create your data stru structure and users in back for app. And every time you are going to send push notifications, this cloud code will uh, connect to uh, your uh, Firebase account and send notifications for those devices with its own IDs created in Backfrap. So everything will work together and in the very end you will have a, a application able to receive push notifications in Flutter. Today I'll show you how to create an installation. An installation is a special type of object that allows you to determine a specific device when sending push notifications. And this is why we have the installation class in Parse. It has a special type of object with a few properties that are automatically set and others that you can set yourself. As you can see here, I have four installations in my uh, example application and here on our uh, Visual Studio inside the main Dart uh, file, we have the configure parse method where I'm up right after initializing my uh, SDK with my application ID and client key, we're going to create a new installation. It's line, lines 46 to 48. And all I'm setting besides the default values in here is a channel. A channel can be used to determine audiences. And in here, here in the channel, we already have a few videos about audiences. So you can target multiple or and specific audiences when sending push. This is not mandatory. I'm ju just doing this so you can see how it works. But you can set uh, one or multiple audiences uh, by channels and then hit only those users. And at the very end, I'm going to do an installation.save. This will create a new installation here on the uh, installation class that will allow me to send uh, push notifications for those devices specifically. Now, you don't have to worry about the code. We will be making the code available as a full solution at the end of this uh, Flutter, not Flutter, parse, Flutter push notification week. And also in here, we have to set the, uh, to ask the permission of the user to send push notifications. This is here in line, is eight, line 80 for uh, in the registered notification method. In the registered notification, we are going to ask the permission for all the uh, features of push notification we want in the devices. Those are in here until line 93. And in here, we can also update the device token, which is a value that will be retrieved when setting the push notifications. So all I'm going to do here is when I get the token or one when the token is refreshed, I'm going to get the current installation, which is the installation that my device has already. And then I'm going to, to set the device token for that installation as the value that was received when I got the notification itself. Then I'm going to save the installation. Once again, you don't have to worry about this code. We'll be making it available at the end of this week. But it's important that you understand what's happening. So in the very first load, I'm going to create an installation and save it. That will be the current, current installation in that device.
This will allow me to target this device when sending push notifications. I'm also setting a channel so I can filter and creating audiences for specific users. Then once I get the token or I get the token refreshed, I'm updating the token in the installation so I always have the current value for it. Today I'll show you how to render the notifications once you receive it. You have two possible scenarios. Your app is open and in the foreground, so you can just uh, render the notification or your app in, is in background and then you have to handle it differently. This is why inside the main Dart file, we have two distinct places to render notifications. First one is in line 23, which is Firebase Messaging Background Handler. This will handle all the background sent messages. Once you get a message, all we're going to do is check the notification. If it's not new, we're going to use the local notification service to show the notification. Then we have four properties that we have to configure. First one is code, which is the hash code of the notification received. Then we have the title, it is the title of the notification. Then we have the body, the body of the notification is the full text that we will show uh, below the title. And then we have the payload, the payload is the formatted JSON encoded uh, part of the notification. If you do this, every time you receive a background uh, message, it will be rendered as a push notification in the device. But you can also receive a uh, notification with the app open and depending on the platform that you're working, it might not render a notification natively. This is why we're going to force uh, display the, the notification. This is in here uh, in line uh, one, 121, we have Firebase on message, listen and then the message. We're going to then check again for the notification if it's not no and uh, this only happens in Android so I'm also uh, checking if it is an Android notification so if your app is open and it is in an Android environment then we're going to force render the notification the same way using the local notification service then showing notification and configuring the same properties the code which is the hash code of the message the title, which is the title of the uh, notification, the body, which is the, all the text that will be showing uh, 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 right after below the body, the title, and then the payload, which is the JSON encoded format of the whole message. If you do these two met uh, methods, we'll be good to go, and every time you receive a new notification in your device, it will be rendered uh, accordingly in your device, even if you have your app already in the foreground. Today, we're going to publish the cloud code that will use Firebase to send our pushes from back for app. And in order to do that, you have to create a cloud messaging API key in Firebase. So here I have my account in Firebase with my project created. And in here, you have this small gear. If you click that and click project settings, you'll find over here cloud messaging. You have to click that. And if you didn't create one already, you can click this generate key pair this will create a new key for me and we'll be using this key in order for our uh, um, cloud code to access Firebase and send pushes that are created in back for app. So I need to copy this value and paste into my cloud code. And remember, you don't have to focus on the code right now. We are going to make all this code available at the end of this week. So focus on learning on how it works and then you can just download everything and run later by yourself. So with this value, uh, we are going to paste it into our cloud code. Here on the very first line, I have a Firebase API key that I created and it's working for my own project. Then I created a cloud job and a cloud function uh, with the same name, SendPush. So I can start the operation through a cloud job or a cloud code function call. So both are here. So here is my cloud job and here is my cloud code function. Both has the same name, send push, and both call the same method with his uh, send notification, which is right down here. In the send notification method, I created an empty uh, array called token list. In here, I'm going to uh, keep all the objects that matches my query. 
Then I created a parse query into the parse installation class where I didn't actually specify any parameters besides existing an, uh, device token. If you want to select a specific uh, installations to send messages to, for instance, using the channel or perhaps any other property of that class, you can use your constraints over here. Then I uh, queried uh, this class using my master key and looped through the results by uh, and added to my token list all the device tokens present that matches my query. So right now I have a array called uh, token list which has all the device tokens that I want to hit with my push notification. Now is the cool part, is the part where we write the JSON that we're going to send to Firebase. And this is pretty much uh, default, so there are a few properties that you need to set. And once you set these uh, properties, you can just push this JSON to Firebase and it will just deliver the pushes. So the first property is notification. And in here, we're going to write two other properties, title, which is the title of your message, and body, which is the message itself that renders right below the title. Then if you need to pass any other parameters to Firebase for any given reason, you can use this data uh, property. And inside here, you can pass in key value pairs with any other information that you want to send. So in this case, I have a key one value one, just as an example, and send date uh, where I retrieved the date time for my system and send it together. Last but not least, I have to send the registration IDs, which is the list of device tokens that I want to hit. It's my token list array. If you want to send just one uh, push notification to just one device, you can use uh, the uh, specific object by using the brackets and then uh, specifying the array uh, position that you want to hit. Then we are going to call the Firebase through its API. We are going to use the parse.cloud.http request, which makes HTTP request calls. And we are going to hit the fcm, googleapis.com slash fcm dot slash send. The method, the HTTP method will be post. We are going to uh, use the content type in the headers as an application JSON. And authorization is key equals and your Firebase API key, which is defined our, our way up here. With that, the body will be the JSON string file of the JSON message that we created right over here with that format I just uh, went through. Once this code runs, if it runs successfully, if it can, it can hit Firebase without any problems, the JSON uh, object will be pushed to Firebase that will understand all the device tokens and all the properties inside the JSON body and uh, deliver the pushes automatically. So there is nothing else you should do besides this point. Everything should work uh, at once, once you call the uh, cloud code, code function that executes this method, or if the uh, cloud jobs uh, that also calls this method gets executed. So this is the basic structure that makes everything work. So we create an installation, we um, I update the device token, we keep the device token in the installation class, then we make a query where we identify the device tokens that we're going to hit, and then we create this uh, specific JSON format and send it to Firebase by, the, uh, by using our API key. The cloud messaging on Firebase will take care of everything else. Today, we will make available the whole project with the uh, front end and back end side code that you can clone and use in your own machine. So the first step in order to get access is to go to back for apps GitHub and download and clone the project. The link is in the description of this video. So all you have to do is go to that website here, click in code. Copy this command in here, perhaps you want to use HTTPS or SSH instead, choose whatever floats your boat and get the code to your own machine. Then you can open up the code using Visual Studio or your favorite IDE. You end up with two folders in there, cloud code and project. Inside project, we will have the Flutter project that you can run. The first thing you have to change in the project folder is to open the lib subfolder and the main.dart main file. In here, you have to change the 
uh, key application ID and key client key of your app in back for app. You can get those values in your dashboard. Once you do that, you can save this file and uh, run the command, command flutter run to run in your device. Then inside the cloud code folder, you'll find a file named main.js. You can upload this to your cloud code section here in back for app by going to cloud code, functions and web hosting and uploading it inside your cloud code folder or uh, open up the main.js file that is already here, copying and paste the code inside here. In this file, you have to change the Firebase Cloud Message API key that we learned how to generate on our last video. So once you do that and deploy to back for app, you can have to click the deploy button. Then you can run your front end to generate your installations. If it runs successfully, you'll find a installation in your installation class here in the database browser. And once you have the installation, you can uh, choose to run the cloud code function that uh, executes the uh, sending of pushes. It's called send push. You can uh, call that cloud code function from the um, API and console rest console. You can use a post method in here. Choose functions slash send push. Send, is it the, the name? Send push. Yeah, send push. Uh, and running it uh, with the send query button. Or you can run it as a service. All you have to do is go to uh, more. Sorry, have to go to jobs, uh, cloud code, then jobs. And in here you find the send push job. Then you can click run now. And this will get the installation, determine the device token that should be used, send it to Firebase and Firebase will send that to your device. Now, you got to remember, if you're using iOS, you must use a physical device to receive the push as the iOS simulator does not receive push notifications. If you're using a device, uh, or an Android device, you can use a simulator to receive your pushes. So this ends up this series that so many of you have requested. It's a very elegant solution. It works out of the box and I hope you liked this solution. So, if you found this video helpful, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so it can help us grow. I also share this link with a friend and they can learn something too. If you already subscribed, thank you for that. And if you have any questions, suggestions, or any implementations you'd like to see, please leave it on the comment section down below. We always answer all the questions. I hope this content was useful for you and hope to see you back. See you soon. Bye bye.